I have a feeling that this is a nice inlaid veneer. So let's get it stripped down and see what we've got under here and see what we can do with this piece. So I started with denatured alcohol to remove all that old shellac that was discolored. Here we see that this is a beautiful inlaid walnut veneer just like the small buffet that I did a few weeks ago. So I decided to go ahead and remove those weird corbel little details that were on there that didn't make any sense that the little buffet had as well. And we're going to remove this little piece as well. It just doesn't seem to go with any of the design. And we've gotten everything stripped down, gotten all the varnish off of it. Got some minor flaws with the veneer here on the top. The veneer that I salvaged from the buffet piece, I think I can use that to fix these issues. It's a lot easier when repairing veneers if you've got a straight line. So we're going to cut this into a bit of a square. So we're just going to take our iron and a damp cloth and that will reactivate the glue that is under the veneer and let us remove that quite easily. Just going to tidy up the edges here and get any remaining glue that might be left under there. We're just going to remove that and we should be close to putting this veneer back in. Now we're just going to put some tape on here and then that way we can use the side of a pencil and make kind of a template so that when we go to put that on top of the veneer that we're going to cut we'll know exactly where we're going to cut that veneer to get those wood grains to match. Because this veneer is on a 45 we're going to cut a bit more to get that to get those lines to match up a bit better. And when you're trying to cut, don't try and cut all the way through the veneer the, with the very first cut. Do some really shallow cuts and then you won't have as much splintering in your veneer. Now that we've got our template on, what we're going to do is we're going to cut on the lines and that should make our wood grain match up pretty well. We're just going to use some, some Tybon 2 and get the glue on there. I quickly realized that I don't have any clamps that will clamp that deep. So we're going to use some blocks that are taped with packing tape so that it doesn't stick to our glue. And then use some paint buckets to put some weight on it and that should make it go flat. And looking at this piece, I've decided that I want the legs a more natural color. You won't get all of this with a scraper, but you can get really good and then come back, use your sandpaper, and then that way you can get into those little crevices with your, with your hide scrapers. Now there's no way that you'll ever get every every little bit of varnish out of here, but I will get a good bit of it. So we're outside today because what we're going to do is we are going to bleach some wood to be sure that it stays nice and, and neutral. So I've mixed up some oxalic acid in water and we're just going to brush that on just like this. And the sun is going to really, really help this process. So trying to do this without getting it all over me. Um, wind blowing a bit, so hard to tell. We're just doing the lower part of the legs or the legs part. Um, the rest of it does not need to be bleached. Well, this may take two or three um, processes, but that's okay. And we're going to do the top as well. The top is poplar, so it's quite light anyhow. 
All right, we're just going to let this sit in the sun for a bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes, come back out, do another application. For those of you who are used to watching the channel, you will be familiar with the Dauber Ball. This is cheesecloth with a cotton t-shirt inside, and I just take my Dauber Ball and go back and forth over my piece to apply my shellac. Now, what I'm doing is really just sealing this piece at the moment because I think I'm going to have to go back and do um, some color work here. So I'm just going to seal those open grains and um, see what I can do about fixing that color. That's where I removed that applique piece and it's just not a great color so I'm gonna go ahead and shellac these when you apply shellac just remember don't overwork it get it on walk away If something didn't get covered, go back and do more coats later. It's always better to do many little coats than to try and fix something. Like right here, I really want to fix that. But I know if I do, it's going to be a problem. So I just need to walk away. Okay, what I have here is some Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso. And I don't really care for the red undertones on the sides of this piece. So I am going to get rid of them with this Dixie Belle stain. Um, you can stain over stains with Dixie Belle. I've already removed the shellac, but it's... With Dixie Belle, they say it's not necessary, but I was going, to, I was thinking about painting the side, but there's nothing wrong with the veneer on this piece. And most of the time, I'm having to deal with problems um, with the veneer, but this piece, the veneer is nice on the sides. No, no damage to it. So I'm just going to change the color of it. What I'm doing here is I am taking a Jacobean stain and trying to just um, kind of color in a little bit better the areas that had lightened up. I don't know that this will work, but I think it's probably my best option is to just to try and blend it a bit um, so far it's looking okay I meant to get this second coat on yesterday but um, went to pick up a project that I bought on auction and I think you guys are going to love it it is a buffet and I think we're going to do a full restoration on it. Um, I've not gotten, I've not unloaded it yet out of the truck, but to take a really good look at it, but it looked quite promising. So, okay, now we've got this inside painted. We're going to go ahead and get started painting what we're going to paint on the outside. Just not going to be a great deal. I'm going to paint here. I'm just going to do basically these um, moldings. I'm going to leave those feet natural that I spent so much time um, sanding down and stripping. And I think this will give this piece just a bit more of an updated look. 
sometimes these can feel quite heavy. They do still have their um, shellac um, coating on them that I put on them before I started painting so that should anybody ever want to strip this back down they'll be able to do that without any issue these are they they are so easy to get right now that they are just dirt cheap because people just don't have big dining rooms to put them in so if we can reinvent them into something else then they may get reused um i actually saw one stunning one this morning for sale for 65 dollars it was much bigger than this unit but it was just beautiful and such a shame that you know there's there's no space for them in our lives now but now the plan is that this piece will be in my um, bathroom, my downstairs bathroom. Hopefully these colors are gonna go well in there. If not, I paint furniture, I'll just repaint it. I have taken the glass out of the door of this piece and what I've done is I've just removed the moldings around that hold the glass. And what I've done is I've numbered those so that I know which pieces match up I know that this is going to go where the knob is, and I've got a one here and a one here, a two here, a two here, and then a three and a three and a four and a four, and I know that if I match up those numbers, these molding pieces will go in just as they're supposed to, and I have used some um, light Loctite spray adhesive on my stencil so that it sticks really nicely and I shouldn't have any problems with with whatever I'm using going under the stencil. What I'm using to do this with is just some rub and buff in the antique gold and then we're just going to dab. Just a dab. A lot of you will have seen me do this on another piece. Um, and I did two colors. Don't think I'm going to go that route with this one. But um, any of you who have watched the channel for any length of time know that I am subject to change my mind at any given moment. So we will see where this piece takes me. Now the other day I got, when I was cleaning this glass, it's so thin and old that when I was cleaning it, I barely touched it and cut myself. And I'm gonna tell you what, it was like a paper cut, that tiny, tiny little cut. Hurt like the devil. You'd think I chopped my foot, my whole finger off as bad as it hurt. Oh, this part makes me so nervous. Sometimes, you can do these, and when you go to peel it off, it peels parts of your paint off, and that just makes you want to cry because you know you've got to do it all again then. So, fingers crossed, everybody hold your breath. Okay, here we go, moment of truth. I can probably hear my heart beating. Oh, it did fantastic, y'all. It did fantastic. I'm so happy. Don't have to do it again. Now, I just ran some stain over these moldings. Um, that's the same color as the outside of the cabinet. So I think that'll... That'll match in really well. So we're gonna get these back on and get this put back together. Now, because we numbered everything, everything should go back in 
exactly where it came out. Every hole should line up. Okay, there's only one thing left to do, and the repairs that I did on the veneer, I'm gonna go through with some wood filler sticks, and they kinda look like crayons, and they come in different colors, so that you can try and match the wood color that you have, whether it be light or dark. So I'm gonna go with this one. I think it'll match pretty good, and it just helps to hide those lines a bit. Okay, so we've got the chef's torch and we are just going to take our knife. We're just going to heat it up a bit. And then when it when that dries, we'll just wipe, we'll just wipe over that, take off the excess wax and it will look as if it were never done. Okay, so we've got this piece all finished and it looks fantastic. I am loving it. I think this piece is gonna be for me, but I've said that before and ended up selling it. So, but um, I need some storage in my bathroom, some more storage, everybody does, I think. And I love this piece. The apothecary came out really, really pretty, and it's got lovely storage inside. Alex has done a fantastic job with the lighting on it, so it will serve as the night light in our bathroom. And the drawer is enough storage for, you know, extra towels, tissue paper, whatever whatever one needs. Here it is all finished and beautiful and I am loving it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to hit like, subscribe, and leave us a comment.